Welcome back. This is uh, underprepared number four. Good it to is. good to be back on the podcast, isn't it, Luca? After a busy busy couple of weeks we've had, haven't we? It's really? been a while. Sorry for being uh, MIA for a little while. Yeah, we had a couple of uh, courses that that we've been running, and as with all of these things, they tend to take a lot of time and a lot of effort, <laughs> a lot of preparation. So uh, last week was great that we had a we had a superb retreatment course. Um, we're here in our practice in Bath, and this is our kind of training room. And we had a group of nine mm. really it was good fun. skilled dentists, actually. Yeah. A, lot, a lot had kind of diplomas, masters and endos, and they stretched us big time. So. <laughs> good, good discussions. They pushed us hard. Uh, there was a lot of prep involved. Um, I think we worked them hard. Yeah. <laughs> but it was great. Good retreatment. First one under the belt. Uh, lots of post-removals, thermo fills, GP. So it was good. Enjoyed it. Absolutely. And, and we had quite a few sort of colleagues and uh, people contact us via you know, usual social channels and stuff asking for a bit more information about true anatomy obviously we tend to, to do a lot of our cases with that file system uh, we talked about it sort of reasonably in depth in, in podcast one going through the kind of like the geometries of the file etc etc yeah. et et so what we thought we'd do today uh, and Luca has drawn the, the short straw uh, as you can see, he's set up for the hands-on demo here. So we thought we would talk through true anatomy, kind mm. of recap it, why we like the system, you know, types of cases it can do, um, and kind of maybe challenge some of the legacy concepts behind Endo, you know, that kind of the big shaping, yeah. the need for the big shaping. And mm. um, so why don't you, you kick off and run through the files? Cool. Yeah. And, and I think with that, we can sort of tie into how it works and, um, and why we like it. For sure. So I'll, I'll just walk uh, through the files and we've got the camera in front of us. Now, this is the, the simplified uh, family of them. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my size 10 for scouting. Okay. And do you still use a 10 for all your cases for scouting or, or uh, patency filing or things like that? No, I do. I, I use... I always use a 10 and we, yeah. we talk about it in a lot of detail in our teaching as well. I, for, for me, and I know if you, I speak on your behalf, on Luca's behalf, you know, the size 10 to, to apex basically is the cornerstone of the treatment. Yeah. And, and I know there's a lot of kind of push towards just mechanized straight off glide pass. But for me, I, I just feel it's a little bit risky and unnecessarily risky when yeah. Yeah, size 10 K file uh, is, is not going to break the bank to use it and actually I think just sets the, the scene very yeah. nicely. If your hand skills are like John's you definitely want a 10 you don't want to go straight to mechanized <laughs> path but uh, <laughs> um, yeah John and I will always use a 10 and I think we advocate it across the board don't don't go straight for a mechanized path uh, it's just simpler. Yeah. Um, so we've got our um, size 10 and then we've got our purple trinatomy which is a shorty okay and we've got our glider file, so the white one is our gliding, and then we've got our finishing file, which is our red or prime. Okay, so similar colors to what you used to with Wiv on Gold uh, and, and other systems. But um, what we're going to do is just effectively use the very, very simple, simple uh, treatment sequence, which are these three nickel titanium file, files. The first thing that uh, we normally do is we scout with the 10 and in this case I'm sorry I'm going to do it blind so if, if I tilt sideways it's not my usual posture when I use a scope and all I will be doing is having a little feel for the canal okay and I will take the 10 to where it, it feels like it's working to where it binds mm -hmm. so I'm nowhere near the, the end I, I do put an apicicator on there just to check that I'm in the right position just just to make sure I'm, I'm not off to one side and that's when my 10 is binding, it's working really hard. And just, just keep an eye on the, on the size 10 number, that's how much these files work. If you think you're, you're moving them very little, move them even less, okay? It's really, really a very small watch wind, there's no balance force, it's very delicate movement. So that's, that's just my initial scouting, and I've got a measurement of, seven, uh, of uh, 17, 22, I've got 22 on this, on this file. And I will just introduce a little bit of irrigant in this case. Fantastic. What are you using irrigant wise here? With, so, I, I know you're using alcohol yeah. in, in a clinical case. What would you I be will using? always use hypo. Yeah. I think I'm using hypo throughout. Um, and I will introduce EDTA just at the very end sure. uh, as a penultimate. But yeah, in this case, I'm just, I'm just purely using um, 
hyper just just the beginning there's there's no need for anything else for me cool. and then what we're doing is we're doing a little orifice opening so this is what's called an orifice modifier the purple little trick that john has correctly mentioned is just take the stopper off it gives you a little bit of better visibility now the important thing is just to sink the whole of that into the orifice simplicity is key for us we're simple people these are spun at 500 rpm on a two newton per centimeter yeah. okay nothing more nothing less are you able to zoom in a bit Luke? i'd love to say a bit sort of bigger on the let me um, you, you really want me to see, see my, <laughs> my hands because i do apologize we'll see how many espressos <laughs> lucas had today <laughs> amazing so again the the beauty of these files is they've got control memory so if you have a difficult access you can put a bend on them okay just make sure that the file is in the orifice before you spin it, otherwise it'll be a little bit tricky. So I've got my orifice modifier in there and I'm really just sinking the whole of it into that, into that canal. A little bit of brushing, ever so slightly, on the, on the mesial aspect. Mm -hmm. the, great, the great thing about this is it's pretty soft metal, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, yeah. it's, it's quite gentle on that coronal prep, which is a is a big part of the philosophy of this system mm -hmm. is that it's, it's, you know, it's designed to try and preserve pericervical dentine. So mm -hmm. we're trying to keep structure in the critical part, the, the kind of three, four mils above and below the CJ. Mm -hmm. um, it's maximally, well, broadly, 0.8 millimetres as yeah. well um, in diameter. So if you compare that to like, what, an SX, which is 1.2, yeah. um, you know, these are quite significant uh, orifice openers. Sure, they might make life potentially a bit quicker but mm. actually i this is one of my favorite uh opening files that, that is out there for me yeah it's flexible it's simple it's not overly uh, aggressive yeah. and i'm just keeping the, the file there to just show you where the debris is it's, it's coronal and that's all i'm doing with the orifice modifier so just releasing the coronal aspect of the tooth so that i can get a bit of irrigant in there lovely and then get my size 10 in there again to see whether there's anything uh, advancing. So let me have a look. Lovely. So that was working at about there. So it's, yeah, it's working hard there. So I'm at about like before. There you go. So that was my mm -hmm. measurement at 22. So let me work with my, let me secure that glide path to 22. And for that, I'm using our white banded trinatomy, which is our trinatomy glider, which I think is really good. It works yeah. really, really well. Um, again, controlled memory, so you can pre-bend it, really, really handy. And again, they are working at 500 RPM, two Newton centimeters. And again, what I'm doing is, you might not be able to see it, but if I zoom out, like in anything, I use two hands, so I stabilize the head of the handpiece with my non-dominant hand. Yeah, it's quite critical that for, for handpiece control, I think. Uh, absolutely. And the other, the other interesting thing about this file, as Luke is prepping here, the, the opening file that we've just used has broadly got a diameter of 0.8 mils, and this is a bit smaller, so it's 0 0.57, 0 0.6 mils. So you're already starting to understand that the little bit of work you've done before has opened the canal a touch to make this transition this glide path uh, a lot easier down to the apex where the file's not working. You probably feel it in your hands. It doesn't work quite so hard in that coronal bit, but it is doing a bit more uh, in, in the mid to apical third. Yeah, and again, you can see, you can see the debris. It's just yeah. more towards the middle part, whereas the top, the coronal part is, is nice and clean. Now, I know I wasn't, I was pretty much there. I've got, I normally do three working passes. So three passes where I can feel the file doing something. And in this case, I've got my glide path to where my 10 was going, and I get to there, my 10 is just flying down now. Absolutely, look at that. It's just going a little bit further. I'll attach my apis locator to that. Look at that. Beep, fantastic. I'm just gonna come back to my zero, which you just about see it on the screen. There we go, that's my zero reading. Okay, so let's see what we've got. So I've got a nice long tooth that John has kindly given me. And I've got 23 and a half, fantastic. So I'm happy to take this glider file to my zero. It's 23 and a half. Yeah. Do you normally do like, that as well? Yeah, mm. I'm, I'm happy for that. I mean, again, if you think about most 
uh, anatomical apices, they're going to be wider than this anyway, so you're yeah. not going to be damaging the construction in any way. Um, obviously what Luca showed with the, the two hand control is important so that you're not having that file pulling or dragging through and risking opening things up more than you necessarily need to. So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with zero reading for that. And the beauty of this file at least is that it really doesn't suck you in and doesn't drag you in. So that's, that's a lot more handy. So I've got the, my two hand control. I've got my zero reading control. I can just about feel it now working. One, two, three. You can just hear it ever so mm. slightly working. There you go. That's it, that's me done. So that's my glide path file, and that's, we will then irrigate. Bit of spritz. Bit of spritz. And I will go back with my size 10 just to make sure, bring all the debris into solution. Look at that, I mean, that is just, flows beautifully down. That's nice. Yeah, that's good. Really nice. Lovely. Now, we've got our prime, which is our finishing file, and I, I think that's how it's easy to separate these files. You've got glider files and finishing files. We've, used, we've done our glide path, now we finish it, we just give that shape that we want. This is the Trunatomy Prime, which is a size 26 at the tip with variable taper. And again, let's say three working passes and then, and then you, can, you can come out. And then I've got, again, two-handed control. It's getting there just working, but I've got so much control with this mm -hmm. file. One, two, three. You know what? I'm not quite <coughs> there yet, but look at the debris in there. Look at the debris on the file. Let's clean the sponge, let the file on the sponge. Irrigate. Size 10 to make sure everything's nice and clean. Yeah, it's looking good. And then I think now these passes will be at length. So I've got, again, prime. <coughs> One. Lovely. Working really nice. It's also got this sort of um, offset parallelogram when we come into the, the shape of files, which is, yeah. is quite critical to help in terms of um, the control of the file when it's slightly bigger and also in terms of dentine chip removal. So it, it creates a bit more space, doesn't it, to allow that, that chip to come out. If it you really like. does. And, you know, I've, it, it, it's a it's not a real tooth, but you know, we've managed to keep it nice and clean and, and you create a lot more debris on these, uh, on these artificial teeth. That's gliding really nicely. Now, what I would say is that the, these files and the, the little nuance about the preparation is that we tend to have files that you prep, you hit your working length and you're done, you walk away. With these, you, you almost want to just hit that length uh, a little bit more, just a very gentle, how does, George Bruder, one of the co-inventors of this, put it, he just a harmony of movements, mm. so a symphony, so I should say. So it's just a slight up and down pumping, if you want. So I can just go back in, and it's really controlled, and I can just make sure that I've got a nice gliding path there. And it, and it is, because it's super elastic, the metal, and you know the, the structure of it, is such, it, it kind of sort of compresses and, and unwinds a little bit as it goes. And, you don't get that over preparation that you would do if you lingered yeah. with a, let's say, a protopic gold, for example, where you, you, you literally, you go down, hit the mark and out, mm -hmm. because it's a much stiffer body of fire. Whereas this is a bit more forgiving, uh, I think, apically in terms of transportational errors. For Absolutely. Me. You know, th th so this is the, the prime and just putting it in, in by, by hand. There you go. So we like to check our length by hand. So we put our Trinatomy prime in there. If it's okay to run to just make sure, mm -hmm. it's done. There you go. I've, I've figured out the length and the, the apical size. Um, these systems come hand in hand with uh, paper points and GPs, and they work really well. Um, so just make sure that you can check your, you've got your length with your, your prime and you're done. Yeah. I, th I think that, simplified. for me, that, that kind of captures the what we call the simple technique. So yeah. that is your... 10 shorty, the, the orifice modifier, the glider, and the prime, which is the finisher. So it's a really well-known sequence, glider finisher. But there are cases, aren't there, where I can see you've got a couple of files uh, in Hiding. your sponge there, Luca, in behind. So we've got the small, which is a size 20, that's the yellow. And we've got a medium, uh, which is the green, which is mm. a 36. 
Um, the small's a 4% taper and the uh, green is a 3% taper. And what's, what's interesting and, and great about these files is whilst they help to bridge the gap, so sometimes, I don't know, where would you be using a small, for example? Very long teeth, mm -hmm. very calcified teeth where my prime is working really, really hard across the whole length of the, of the file. The small just bridges that gap and allows you to just have a bit less of a jump between glider and finisher. Yep. Uh, and then when it comes to the prime after using the small, you're just refining your apical prep. It makes it a little bit easier for irrigant, makes it a little bit easier to obturate. Yeah. So I'd take the small, if my prime, my ride wasn't going flowing down like it did, I'd just bring the yellow in the small to just make sure that it glides nicely. Yeah, and for me then, the medium, I think, is a really useful file, particularly in slightly, you know, bigger or anatomical mm. apex cases, like, you know, palatals of an upper first molar, for example. Yeah. And again, the maximal file, di file diameter of these is, is only 0.8 millimeters. Yeah. So you're not preparing further coronally. So we're, we're maintaining the dentine that's there. Yeah. But you are finessing the apical preparation. I think that's quite a key word. You yes. are just finessing the apical preparation. So in terms of respecting what you've got in front of you, uh, I think it's a system that, that's really nice. Um, it's not going to do everything, but then no file system does everything. No. Um, no. Yeah, and, and I think it's a really nice demo, that. Um, anything you want to add before we close? No, I think uh, it, it's, we, we, it's really good for the cases such as long, case, long teeth, calcified teeth, curve, double curvatures, so anything a little bit anatomically interesting. I think that's certainly a file that uh, works very well. It's very user-friendly, so you've got a lot more control than some other files. The motion is at 360 rotations, so it's very known. Um, <clears throat> and it satisfies everything that maybe we've carried on from legacy concepts, such as you know deep shaping or big apical preparations. You can still achieve it with these without sacrificing too much coronary. So I think it, it, it covers a lot of bases and I think it's an easy system to pick up. It really is. Yeah, absolutely. I well, I, I hope you guys have found some of that uh, useful. Thank you for doing the demo, Luke. It's very kind of welcome. <laughs> and uh, we will hopefully join you guys next week. We're going to get back to a few more case discussions. The diary is looking a little bit lighter over the yeah. next few weeks, so uh, we should be able to get back on the, the video and get some cases across to you. So mm -hmm. thanks very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.